Hello. Hi. Today we are going to discuss one more very important topic. Uh, it sounds like at the very end of some process, it is test result reporting. So what yeah. are we going to discuss today? So uh, each activity in our real life should end uh, with uh, uh, like analyzing and uh, providing some results of our work. And in testing activities, we also should do this. And this type of activities is uh, usually called as test result reporting. Ludmila, could you please describe what is it? Can you please uh, tell a definition? Yeah, maybe like a brief definition is that test result report is a document that usually created uh, after some phase of testing after some part of process of testing it summarizes just some kind of result and provide um, uh, the current status of quality the current level of quality of our product yeah, absolutely but here i would like to say that there are two different like definitions and two different type of reporting. Usually when we are talking about like results, we say that this is a test result report. But actually there are different uh, types of reports that uh, testers can provide on their project and other type, for example, is a test status report. What is the difference between them? Uh, if uh, we are talking about uh, the uh, providing result reports as uh, of some phase, for example, we have localization testing uh, or regression phase on our project, we can say that we, after it, we should provide test status report. But if we are talking uh, at, or about ending of some phase on our project at the part of time, uh, here we should provide test result report. For example, at the end of the sprint or at the end of some um, phase on our project. So yeah, kind of a uh, report that has established period of time, yeah? that you yeah. should report after the end of some kind of phase, yeah. established phase. Agree, but so uh, don't miss about these uh, two uh, types of reports. Uh, remember the difference between them. But in general, usually we uh, on each report, we can say that this is a test result report. Uh, so uh, and the next question we should answer when we should create them. Yeah, and if you expect kind of strict answer, you're not going to have one. <laughs> Actually, I would like to say that at the end of some activities, so if you uh, pass all test cases or checklist, if you report all the bugs and you would like to uh, go and sleep, for example, no, you should do this uh, report uh, after finishing these activities. <laughs> yeah, actually, it very differs from project to project. This period when you are expected to give this kind of report, yeah, and what is included and so on and so far. So uh, stay sharp and there is no, as it was mentioned before, exact answer. Yeah, so and after uh, the end, <laughs> after the end of anything, yeah. And uh, you mentioned good things that, uh, for example, we even should create uh, a report at the end of the day, uh, at if junior can do this, or uh, at the end of the week, or at the end of the sprint, two week sprint, or at the end of the month, or at the end of the phase, or at the end of the uh, some. Uh, testing type, for example, uh, performing localization or regression testing. So at the end. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> yeah. But the most important question is why? And before starting to answer this question, uh, we should answer one more. For whom we should create this test result report or any type of report? 
uh, actually stakeholders of test result reports can be like following of course it can be a project manager who expect that you will answer what uh, did you do what did your test team do during some period of time or during some kind of task uh, as it was mentioned before yeah, uh, and the also project manager are interested in as application is uh, good, uh, is our application uh, correct, uh, and so on. So, uh, uh, is it uh, ready for release, and so on. For sure, uh, one of the stakeholders of your report, it can be your test lead, uh, because, uh, for example, if you are a junior on some project, uh, your test lead can ask you to prepare a report uh, on a daily basis. So each day you should uh, provide information, what uh, did you do during this working day? Yeah, be, be ready for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The next one, it can be a team of developers or their fleet. Uh, it, they also uh, would like to see the statistics uh, about the bugs, what was found, what was fixed. And this is uh, also important. But the main person or people, this for sure, our customers. So uh, for, um, without customers, uh, we can't imagine any project. So our IT project uh, exists uh, because of the customer, because we have a customer. So for sure, customers also would like to have such information. Yeah, but again, what was done by our team, some kind of statistic about new bugs, as it was mentioned, about fixed bugs. Also, he expects maybe some information about possible risks. What can went wrong if we have, for example, the same bug again and again, and it was like found again after regression, some information about risks and some recommendations, I suppose, will be great. Yeah, absolutely. So answering the question why, the main reason is providing information, including statistics, uh, performed uh, activities, testing activities, by whom, when, and so on, uh, statistics on uh, bugs, uh, found, uh, fixed, uh, general information about risk and uh, uh, recommendations for our stakeholders. In each situation, it's a different type of uh, information should be provided uh, by different for different people. Yeah, and this information they're going to use to make the product better, to make the process better. So it's not just report for report. Yeah, absolutely. It's always some kind of plan of your future actions. Yeah, these kind of recommendation and summaries, they will help you to understand how to improve again project and process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think uh, that's all about reporting and this video was useful for you. Yeah, stay with us. Bye. Bye.